What's up people? Welcome back to the channel. Just hit 1,000 subs. So I want to thank anybody who subscribed, who's been watching the videos. Thank you for checking us out. It's been two months since we released the first vlog. So did not expect to hit 1K by now. Really good motivation to keep going, keep pushing out content, keep playing the games, trying to play in bigger games. Some couple of good plans coming up for the next couple of months. So today, we're heading back out here again to Grand Villa. Seems to always be lashing rain when we come out here, but they don't call it rain key over for nothing. Plan is today, hop in the 2-5 game, back to winning ways, see what the score is out here. Usually the games are pretty good. Don't know if you can see that there. For hitting 1,000 subs, we're gonna give something away. We're on a competition. Haven't decided what we're gonna give away yet. We'll probably give away something decent. So let's get after it. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, it's the Irishman Poker here, we're back at Grand Villa playing a 2-5 session, we're into the game for $1,000, so let's see how we get on. If I sound funny, I have a bit of a cold at the moment, it's not COVID, I swear, it's probably the rake of points I had between Christmas and New Year's. Anyways, kicking off the hand, there's an undergoing straddle on to 10, the hijack raises to 40, cut off calls, the button calls, and I look down a pocket 8s in the big blind. We have an easy call here, hoping to flop a set, and that's exactly what happens. First hand, and we flop a set straight away. Flop comes ace, jack, eight with two hearts, so we flop bottom set. There is a flush draw and plenty of straight draws out there, so we check it back to the initial raiser, and he fires out a bet of $50. Really small bet, quarter pot. I wouldn't expect him to have too many really strong hands here. If he had a hand like ace, king, I would expect it to bet a lot bigger. It gets called by the cutoff and called by the button. So we can't be going far ways to a turn here with bottom set. There's a lot of terrible cards for us that can come on the turn. Any, heart, any cards that can play the straight. We have the best hand here more than likely. So we're going to raise it up. Start getting some value for our set right now. We raise it up to $260. Could maybe go a bit bigger considering there's four players on the pot. But it's a bit over 5x. And to our surprise, every player in the pot wants to see the turn. The initial raiser calls, the cutoff calls, and the button calls. So we're going four ways to a turn. We're hoping it's a blank. We really don't want to see a heart or any card that completes a straight, a seven, a nine, a queen, a king. So a lot of bad turn cards for our eights. But what happens is we get one of the best turn cards in the deck. It comes down to three of clubs, an absolute blank. If we're ahead now, we're still ahead. There's 12.50 in the middle, we've only 6.60 behind, there's nothing else we can do when we have half pot behind, we're sticking it in the middle, hoping a couple of people call off with some draws and they all have each other's outs. Gets back to the initial raiser, he thinks for a couple of seconds, flicks in one chip to make the call, cut off now goes into the tank, after a couple of seconds he decides to let it go and the button also goes into the tank, says he's thinking of gambling but eventually decides on a fold instead. So now there's 2570 in the middle. We're going to a river. We reckon we probably need to fade a heart. Initial Razor can definitely have a lot of ace X of hearts. If you had ace king, ace queen of hearts, you had top pair and enough flush draw, which I wouldn't expect to go anywhere. So we're more than likely have the best hand here. I would have expect aces and jacks to bet bigger on the flop. So in my eyes, we have the nuts. River comes down another eight to give us quads. Happy days, we turn over our hand. Oh my god. And he turns over pocket aces. So we were so dead on the turn, we only had one out. We were 2% with one card to come, and we hit our miracle card when we didn't even realize we needed to hit it, which is crazy. It's such a sick B for the aces. It's Nothing neither of us can do. We're both going to get the money in. But to get one out of it on the river in an absolute massive pot. It's like 500 big blinds at 2-5. It's pretty sick. But we'll take it when the poker gods are on our side. We'll take it every time. Because sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail. 
So this next hand is a very out of line hand against a very special player. This guy is a legend, but he's also a massive whale. Strolls up to the table like 007, James Blast, license to punt. So there's a button straddle of 10 on. It falls to middle position who limps in. 007 is in the low jack. He decides to call. I look down at ace-10 off and make it 60 to go. Both players call and we go three ways to a flop. Flop comes ace-jack-8, rainbow. So we flop just ace-high here. We don't really have anything. We have an overcard and a backdoor straight draw, but that's about it. Middle position checks. 007 decides to lead out for $80. So basically against this guy, he just does this all the time. And you just need to call him down with any pair and even ace high. Like I'd seen a couple of wild hands he played. There was a similar hand where a guy flopped top pair with ace king out of position. And just checked it to this guy three times. And he bet bet jammed queen 10 off. So when he leads out for 80, I'm not really believing it. And I know if I call as well. The original limper will have to fold some hands that beat us. If he has a hand like pocket sixes, pocket fives. When it goes back call, he's more than likely going to fold these hands. So, he's the only one I'd be worried about having me beaten. Yeah, 007 can have a jack sometimes. Don't think he chooses to lead with an eight. So, we're just going to call. Turn now comes to three of clubs. Pretty much a blank. And we're going with our reasoning from before. We're just going to have to continue calling. We know what this guy is like. There's wanted posters everywhere. No blasts are in the vicinity. So we're going to call again after he bets $160 and see a river. There's now $670 in the middle. And the river comes down to six of spades. He doesn't take long before shoving all in for his remaining 500 So... We just have ace high, but we've got ourselves to this river by saying we're going to just call this guy all the way down. So when we get to the river and he keeps firing, we're not going to change our mind. We're going to just stick in the call. More than likely have the best hand. Yeah, sometimes we'll be to a jack. Maybe sometimes he just pairs a random six and blasts off with it. That's what he's known to do. But I think we're going to be good here way more than enough than we need to be to make this call. So we stick out the call. He turns over nothing. 10 off for a missed straight draw. Our ace high is good. Always nice to make a massive hero call on the river for someone stack with ace high. Even if with this combo, it's probably a bad combo to call down because it blocks 9 10. But against certain players, you don't need to worry about what you're blocking. Anything like that, you need to just close your eyes, keep clicking the call button, and let them give you the chips. So. <laughs> There's a limp under the gun and we ISO to thirty dollars next seat over with a shack of diamonds. Going a bit bigger here because the table's particularly sticky, so gonna up our sizes with our value hands. Gets to the hijack, he decides to call. Folds back to the original limper and he flicks in the call as well. Heading three ways to the flop and it comes queen of clubs, eight of diamonds, six of spades. So we've just ace high here but a couple of backdoors. We have a backdoor flush draw to the nuts. We can turn some good cards. So when it's checked to us we decide to see bet and fire out $40. The hijack calls and under the gun gets out of the way. Turn now comes to two of spades. So it doesn't really change anything. We don't pick up anything so... I think generally we should maybe start checking now, but in the moment we decided to just fire the second barrel and hope to fold a hand like nines, sevens, fives. So I think, yeah, sometimes we can check ace high. We're going to have some worse hands that we would rather continue to bluff with. Maybe we're bluffing too much if we fire all our ace highs, but we decide to fire the second barrel, see what he does. We fire $100 and he calls pretty quickly. River now comes to six of diamonds, pairing the six, so doesn't change anything on the board, none of the draws got to get there, so after he calls twice, I think we're just going to wave the white flag now, I don't expect him to fold a queen, unless we do something mental, like bet 2x pot, but I don't think we want to do anything other than just give up at this stage, we check it, and he bets 275, and we have a pretty easy fold. The button straddle is on once again, falls to under the gun, he calls to 10, I look down at pocket 9s, next seat over, raise it up to $50 to go, falls to the button, he decides to call, falls back to under the gun and he decides to call also. So we're going three ways to a pot here with 
Pocket nines, hoping they're not seeing any overcards, but we get one better. Flop comes, 9A2, and we flop another set. This is crazy. Don't think I've ever flopped that many sets in such short succession in a session, so this is pretty nuts. We have the nuts again. It checks to us. We go with a small bet of $40, about a quarter pot. We usually use smaller sizes in these multi-way pots. Probably went a bit smaller than usual, hoping sometimes if we can induce a bluff. People might just think we're betting our entire range for $40 and might attack it on 9A2. The button decides to call and under the gun decides he doesn't believe us. Or he either has a monster too and raises up to $160. We're just going to call here with the nuts, hope the button comes along, hoping that we go three ways to a turn, keep both players in, but unfortunately he lets it go. So we're going heads up to the turn and it comes another deuce, so we now make a full house, makes it less likely that he has a strong hand that we can stack, it makes it so that there's only one combo with two SF now, there obviously also is three combos of eights, and he can have hands like jack, ten, six, seven as bluffs, so... When he decides to bet another 350, don't think we should do anything else here other than call. If he does have a monster, such as pocket 8s, or if he does have pocket 2s, we're going to stack him, or he's going to stack us, regardless of what the river is. And if he has a bluff, we want him to continue to fire on the river. So, we do a little bit of Hollywood, and spend a couple of seconds in the tank, hoping it looks like we have a tough decision here. We eventually put the 350 out as a call. River now comes and off to three, so changes nothing again. We're hoping that he fires one more time. He has 1300 left in his stack. There's 1217 in the middle. We're hoping he sticks the rest of it in, but he doesn't. He decides on a chunky bet of $800. We tank for about 10 seconds and stick the remaining chips all in for his last 500 behind. Not expecting him to fold if he has something decent, but... He when he snap folds it shows he probably did just have a hand like Jack Ten or six seven and he went for it. Unfortunately for him, he ran into the top of our range. So we end up running like God again tonight and just picking up another massive pot. We're not even doing much, we're just flopping monsters. People are betting into us, giving us the chips. We can't help it. We'll take one of these sessions anytime that they come. Unfortunately, they don't come that often. To this hand, we now have over 5k stack, over 1,000 big blinds at 2.5. We're only in for 1,000. We're up 4k. This is an absolute dream session. Let's see if it can... Con Under the gun limps, and I look down at the red jacks next seat over. We're going to bump it up. $25 to go. Middle position called. Gets back to the small blind. He decides to rip all in for $415. He's just doubled up two or three hands before from $200. He's been looking to gamble his stack back up. We're going to oblige. Try give him his double up. We stick in the call. And middle position falls. The board ends up running out. Ace jack eight. So amazing flop for us. We flop a set if we were behind. Although I don't think we would be behind. Because I don't expect aces or kings just to rip. I think they just three bet. But he can have some worse pocket pairs. Maybe some ace queens, ace kings. That he just rips. He's just hoping to get the double up. But fortunately for him. We are probably ahead pre. And we're definitely ahead on the flop. Turns co comes a king. Completes the queen ten straight. Don't expect him to have queen ten. River comes a five. We turn over our jacks. And he sends his cards into the muck. So probably had the winner pre. Definitely had the winner on the flop. We're after getting another gift off a player. One of those days where people are just handing you money. Feels like Christmas and your birthday at the same time. Just sat down at this table of strangers. Everyone keeps handing me money. Long may it last. We look down at Ace King off here. Two very powerful cards. Folds around to the cutoff. He opens to $20. We're going to bang this up here. With a hand as strong as this, we want a tree back. Get some more money in the pot. We're in position on the button, so we're going to have a lot of 3-bets here versus the cutoff. This is one of our better hands. We 3-bet up to $90. He thinks for a minute, doesn't call, and decides to 4-bet to 300 So, he started the hand with 2200 in chips. We have him covered. We have about 5 k So, I think 4-bets in live poker generally are pretty strong. The player himself, I've seen him in a couple of games. I don't think he's too out of line, so I'd imagine this 4-bet range would be pretty tight. Either way, we have way too strong of a hand to fold here, so we're just going to call and go heads up to a flop. And it comes down a pretty decent one for our exact hand. It comes ace, queen, jack, rainbow. So we've top pair, top kicker. 
I'd expect in far better pots, especially on a board like this, where the far better is going to have such a range advantage, you're going to expect him to bet small a lot of the time. But he opts for a check, which is pretty weird because I would have expected his whole range just to fire out for like 170, 175. But when he goes for a check, I think hands he could check. Maybe sometimes you might check a hand like pocket kings. I wouldn't expect him to fall by pocket 10. So I also think he can be trapping quite a bit here. Hands like pocket aces, pocket queens, pocket jacks if he fall bets. But I'm not sure how likely that is. I think he will call maybe half the time, fall by half the time. I also think he could have a hand like ace queen. So we have to be pretty wary with the check. Even though we do have top pair, top kicker. It's a really dangerous board in a far bet pot, so we're just going to check back for some pocket troll. We get to see what he does on the turn. If he checks again, we can start going for some value on the turn and the river. So let's check and see what happens on the turn. Turn now comes a Nasu 5. Complete brick. Doesn't change anything. He now bets 350 into 607. So a bit of a bigger size here than you'd usually see in far bet pots. He goes over half pot. Could be because he checked the flop. He wants to start building a pot now with a good hand. It's interesting as well. If he did have just like a random bluff. Say for argument's sake he did 4 bet a hand like 6-5 suited or 7-8 suited. Say sometimes he does that at low frequency. I would expect them to bet the flop 100% of the time on such a good board for his range. So when he goes check and bets the turn I'm pretty suspicious. Don't think raising would accomplish anything here. Folding is out of the question. So we're just going to call and see what develops on the river. We flick in the call. There's now 1307 in the middle. We're going to a river and it comes an all suit 9. So complete blank. Doesn't change anything. King 10 was already a stray. And he bet 650. So now we're in a bit of a tough spot here. Because I think this is actually a spot where lately. I've just been like oh I've ace king. This has to be a call. It's just a side call and hopefully we're ahead. But I think something I want to change this year is I want to stop paying off value bets in these spots. So when we look at how he played this hand, he four bet pre, he checked the flop and then bet the turn and bet the river. I don't think in live poker many players choose this line as a bluff. I think if they were to bluff, they would start their bluffs on the flop. And as far as hands, is he ever value betting a worse hand than ace-king? The next worst hand is ace-10 off. I don't think so. So we have a pure bluff catcher here. I also think he could sometimes check maybe ace-king and then bet the turn, bet the river. That is a possibility. But even if he is doing that, it's pretty dicey because what's he looking to get called by? Is he looking to get called by ace-10 suit? Like, I don't have these hands. So it's pretty interesting. So I think we're basically calling to chop or be the bluff. And in these four bet pots live... When he takes a check bet bet line, I don't think he's ever bluffing. And I think this is just a spot where maybe a solver says you have to call just because you have ace king on this board. It's a four bet pot. Usually when you flop top pair in a four bet pot, you don't really want to do much folding. But we started the hand pretty deep. So I think this is a hand where usually I probably would have just side called. But I decide in the end that I just don't think this guy has enough bluffs. So I think we can just fold this hand. Like, I think elite players would be capable of turning a hand like Kings into a bluff. Maybe, like, an ace-3, ace-4 suit type hand into a bluff. But I don't think enough people at 2-5 live poker are going to ever be doing that. If he did choose a hand like Kings, it's a pretty nice bluff. And well done to him. Hats off. But even, even with that line, I would expect Kings to just auto-bet the flop small at some frequency. So, I think... We're just always up against a better hand here. If he has a bluff, well done, well played. He got me off top pair, top kicker. But I think going forward, this is a hand we just want to click the follow button. People don't bluff enough at live poker. It'll probably save us a lot of money in the long run. So for the final hand today, we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to keep my hand hidden. I will reveal the hand in the comments within 24 hours. I want people to guess whatever hand you think I have. I will give some hints along the way. And if you guess the hand correctly to the Sioux, I will give 5% of my action in the World Series of Poker Calgary Monster Stack event next week. If no one gets the Sioux but gets the hand correct, I'll give it to that person. If there's a tiebreaker, we'll do a random name generator to find a winner. So if you do like this, let me know in the comments and I can continue to do them. If not, I can leave it at this one, but let me know how you feel about it. So in this hand, there's four limps in middle position. 
the button now decides to make a $35 cigar. He's the villain from the Ace King hand. I look down at my hand on the small blind. I decide a three bet with this hand is going to be what I want to do. I'm going to three bet a lot of my range out of the small blind. This is a three bet as a bluff, so there's one hint. I make it 150 to go and the button calls. So we're going heads up to the flop. It comes ace of hearts, queen of clubs, four of spades. So we completely whiff the flop, but we do have a couple of back doors. We do have a range advantage here on this board. We're going to have more of the aces, ace king, ace queen, queens. So given that we have a lot of strong hands here, we're going to continue for a small sizing. We bet $130 into 315, just over one third, and he decides to call. Turn now comes the nine of diamonds, so we don't improve with our exact hand. We actually have no showdown value. This is one of the worst hands we're going to get to the turn with here. So I'm going to continue to bluff a hand like ours. We're never going to win at showdown. So we're going to fire one more. Try getting to fold some pocket pairs. We can put pressure on a hand like eight, seven, sixes. So I think we're going to barrel here again. I don't expect him to fold too many queens. But we may be able to start putting pressure on some of his weakest queens. We decide to barrel here for $250. He looks at me, lets it go, and we take this one down. So, nice hand to finish the vlog there with. Comment below what hand you think I had. And the winner will get 5% in the World Series of Poker Monster Stack next week at Calgary. I'll be out there vlogging for the entire week. Bunch of tournaments, bunch of cash games. So, we'll have multiple vlogs uploaded from the trip next week. And if people like this, I'll do more giveaways like this in the future. I think it's a cool way to give away action in tournaments or free rolls or whatever we're planning on giving away. So, thanks for tuning in again. Right, so wrapping up the session. Really good session today. Don't even think we played that well. We just got, like we won out at someone in a massive pot. We just flopped a lot of sets. One of those days, can't complain. Actually a bit upstuck at the end, we were up more. So we were into the game for a thousand, out for 4257 for a profit at $3,257. So it was nice to have a big session like that. We were up, we had over a 5k stack at one stage. Then we made the fall with Ace King in the four bet pot, which I'm unsure. I just don't think this guy is ever bluffing. And I feel like spots like that lately, I've just been calling it off a lot, like just having hands where, like in GTO land, I probably just have to call the Ace King and just be like, I need the call. And people just always have it. So, interesting one, but I don't know. Good to be back in the winning books for the Calgary trip next week. If you're out in Calgary too and you see me out there at the tables, come say hello. We'll have a pint. So, see you from the next one. Peace.